Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan. First things first, welcome to my channel. This is my first video, hope you guys enjoy. So, what are we doing today? Well, let me tell you. Here we have the new Jeep Gladiator from Axial on 24th scale. And so what we're gonna do is do some top three mods that you can do for free. You can do it in your own home, it's pretty simple to do, shouldn't take you long. All right, so first things first, actually, we remove the screws. And to make things easier, I recommend taking the body off, easier to work on the the car here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that Okay, one shock done. I'll see you with the others. And good. Now we have all four shocks. The stiffer ones are the rear shocks. The softer ones are of course for the front. So a thing that you probably might or may or may not know would be that you can actually adjust the shock preload. So by, by what I mean is that if you notice, is a little little limit cap thing here, sorry. Right? So you can move that all the way up or push it down. And now you but you have stiffened your shock. Pretty cool little thing. Let's see if it will just focus a little bit more. There you go, see? And you can move it up to wherever you like it. And uh, I see people do, what they would do is have a zip tie, which is pretty smart, and just wrap it around here so that way you avoid it going back its to original position and it'll stay there. So it's a really cool little real little tip for you. And But we're not gonna be focusing on that right now. Right now, we're gonna remove this cap. So you twist it off, right? You twist it, twist it, twist it, and boom. Now, now it's exposed, it's, it's open. Now the reason why I opened it is because we're gonna add a little bit of red grease. And so the reason why I'm gonna do that is because whenever you, you use your little, your little car, your RC, it bounces like crazy. And it's just so funny because it's just, I don't know. Point is, it's not realistic. <laughs> it's not realistic. So, uh, what we're gonna do is get some grease. Actually, I had I already had some here uh, ready. Just got enough for this project. So, what I'm gonna use is an X-Acto knife just to grab a little bit. You don't want to grab too much because then. Uh, they won't spring back out. It just, it just stays stuck, and you don't want that. So, so all I did was was pour a little in, just clean it up, just a little bit, just enough. So you could like even poke it in if you want, but you don't need a lot, just enough. So, so it doesn't seize either. And what you're gonna do is do that to all four. Now, of course, you're gonna close, you're gonna seal it back up, so. Uh, uh, these things are so puny, it's just like, they're super fun, but they're like so, so tiny to work with and it could be very 
frustrating at times. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm frustrated right now. I'm just saying it could be frustrating. So now that this one's done, you're gonna do the same thing to all four. I mean, to yeah, to all four, and we'll get back to you. So what I'm doing right now is actually just making sure this springs back out. If it springs back out, then you did good. If it, if you press it and it stays stuck there and it won't spring back out, then you have to take some out or, or you could just like keep like doing that until it's, it's okay. <laughs> I don't think even if you do put a little bit more than you should. Uh, it, honestly, I don't think it matters. But if it becomes too much of an issue, then yeah, just open it back up and and just take some out and you should be fine. No, no biggie. All right, we got our front, we got our rear, and we got the SCX24 here. The extended chassis length version, of course. Now, what we're gonna do this is what we're gonna do no we're not just going to angle these shocks but we're also going to flip it angled and so what that's gonna do is bring the CG down a little lower and to be a little bit more extra is what if you notice here there's a hole so I have two options uh, you can do so I have some BBs here and I think you already know where I'm going with this. So we got the option of BBs or the option of screws. So now I managed to find uh, these screws in a screw kit that I have. It's an old screw kit. I don't know the, the length or the measurements to tell you what kind of screw this is so that way you can like potentially get one or whatever but you could literally use anything and they, they, they do add quite a bit of weight so so what we're gonna do is you have this screwed on and it's just the right amount of size for it to like screw on and won't fall out so you could either screw it in or like what I'm gonna do just push it in like that and this should add weight to the to the bottom and or you can let me go over here real quick i'm gonna use an older shock for this demonstration because for here i want to use the screws only because they add a little bit more weight than these bps so i'm gonna put this original shock from the car there and this so you could go with either option so what you're gonna do is stick this BB in. I'm gonna push it in, super easy to do. If you have pliers, honestly, use them instead. There, it's a lot easier to push them in. Then you're gonna grab another BB. I'm gonna push that in as well. Then with your pliers, just squeeze it in. Now you could only really fit two in here and then that adds weight to the to the bottom so really cool really cool little little hack and they won't fall out because they're really tightly hugged by the by the composite shock here so really awesome and now i'm gonna put the rest of the screws in each shock and boom done with that it is in all right, cool. Now, now I just realized that I can't just screw it into this rear hole here because it has nothing to really hold on to the screw. So we're gonna hold up on that until I can figure something out. So what we're gonna do is actually remove the sticker of on the motor. 
So what that would do is not collect the heat on the motor. So. Three screws, you can pop it out. All right. So now, what we're gonna use is an X-Acto knife. So you're just gonna Okay, what I don't want to do is have to remove the whole motor, you know? I mean, should I? I think it's a big deal. All right, let's see. It might, it might actually be easier. All right, so I figured out how to mount the rear shocks. All I did was take these posts that were screwed onto here, just shift it back, take off the take off the shock, screw it into that place where I was gonna do it originally, and there we go. Now both shocks are angling a different way. So now the inclines, it should perform a lot better in inclines, and and yeah, cool little cool little thing I did there. <laughs> okay, now that we have the motor. If you're planning on keeping it stock, and if you're willing to go through the extra work and hassle, well, what you would want to do is actually flip the motor around. So you would actually, instead of installing it back this way, you would have to remove the center plate where this motor mounts to, because of course the motor has to be mounted on the plate. And what you do is flip it. So what that does is shift that little bit of weight toward the front and typically in in an, in, a, in any crawler uh you want more freight toward the front than in the rear so that's another thing we're not going to do it in, in this video i i honestly don't think i'm going to do it it's just way too much work whenever you do flip it uh your forward trigger is going to be now in reverse with your car and if you press reverse on your trigger on the remote it's gonna go forward so what what do you do how do you fix that well easy all right so if you notice there's these white little tabs here so what you do is you're gonna poke these and lift it up so you're gonna sort of put the knife the blade in here lift up the plastic right and you pull the wire out and you can do that for both and then once you do take it out for both you're just gonna flip them so the red is gonna go where the black wire is and the black wire goes where the red is and it should put it back to its original position no soldering required and you will move more weight toward the front and it's gonna be it's gonna be great I should let the motor life last a lot longer. <laughs> Honestly, I don't like how this looks. It also gets in the way when you're crawling when there's a rock. So what we're gonna do is just remove it.
Now, speaking about the body, I hate how it's super tinted. So what, so what I'm going to do is exactly what I did with my C10. And here, actually, let me bring it to you. Bam. Modified C10 like crazy. Holy shoot, this thing weighs so much. You can see it's, it's an absolute beast. Um, it's kind of like slopped to the angle because I lost I lost the spring, so I forgot to put in some Loctite, and the spring just like flew off while I was crawling around with my friends. But yeah, super sick. If you guys want to see a video about this little crawler, talk about what I've done to it, let me know in the comment section, and I'll sure do it. So. I have the issue with this axial body is that both both of these had tinted windows. So what I did was actually just with an exacto knife just trim off the edge just barely so that way I keep the I still keep the the border part of the sticker and I'm gonna do the same thing with here. So what I'm gonna do is just trim across this line all around and then just peel it off. Then after that, I'm gonna do what I did with the C10 also. So I trimmed off the window, like if it was rolling down. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing so you can see the little cowboy guy inside. So I'll show you when I've done it and it should be now and boom all right you can see i trimmed out the windows so it looks like they're rolled down with the other side i rolled it down just less and then for the front i trimmed out the 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 sticker so it's a little it's a bit clear so you can see the difference there so now you can see the guy in there a little better yeah, that's a cool thing. Now, another thing I want to mention is that since we deleted the bumper, we also want to delete this thing. In my opinion, this is unnecessary weight. I'm pretty sure it's just nothing. But to take it out, you, you, it's this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw, and the whole thing should pop off. And I'll let you know from there. Boom, there we go, we got it off. But now, this is part of the rack on the on the truck. So, we remove these screws as well. All right, set that to a side. Now, we put these back on here. All right, and we are done. Honestly, I like the look without the without the little tent on it. A lot better as is to me, of course. All right, now we're gonna put it back on. And all right, there we have it. That's the red height now. So I guess CG is higher now, but at least the shocks will compensate some, some of the weight. 
bringing it down lower. But yeah, that's uh, that's one of the few tricks I have up my sleeves. And articulation is now increased, definitely increased by like half an inch. Shoot, it just looks so good now. See, check that out. Right now, it's on. Okay, there's on three wheels. Boom. Really nice. Really nice. I'm happy with how it came out. And now, let's take it for a spin.